Well hello there. Just a few words to start this video if you have a second. The presenter is Dr. Eric Johnson. He's a veterinarian with a specialty in fish health. He's been treating fish since 1991. He's authored a book on Amazon.com called, Koi Health and Disease 2. The audio of most YouTube videos is recorded in his car, not a studio. So please pardon the gritty quality of the audio tracks. Sometimes the background is a robot like myself, a PowerPoint presentation, or just Dr. Johnson driving to work. Again, please pardon the not fancy video. In the final analysis, these videos are created to educate. It's hard to entertain with stuff as boring as this, but it's still useful and important information. We appreciate you watching. Please, like and subscribe at the conclusion of the video, so that other people can find this information more easily. Many thanks. Welcome. Thank you. I am going to talk today a little bit about broken backs and stray voltage, because half the time they're related. Um, so let me tie those two together so you can see why I'm going off in these different directions. Stray voltage is the escape of electricity, usually of um, pretty stout voltage at an extremely low amperage in the water of a tank. It's just a slight fault that allows an electronic appliance, say a light or a heater ballast or something like that, to allow current to go at 112 volts, 110, whatever your prevailing voltage is, uh, through the water to ground, which makes it safe. It's not a big deal, except that the voltage is going from the light fixture through the water to the ground. It makes it easy to measure. And that escape of electricity can be a big deal. For example, if you're standing in a salt bath and you touch that water and the light's touching the water and there's a ground fault, then that voltage can go not just from the light through the water to the ground, it can go from the light to the water to the salt bath at the base of your feet, transferring that voltage through you, um, for better or worse. In other words, it might just sting, it might shake you around, it might uh, do worse than that, kill you. Not common. Don't know if I've ever even heard of somebody dying that way, but I have had stray voltage situations in my fish room, and they can be uncomfortable until you fix them. So when you have a stray voltage situation, the fish don't immediately die, but they can show a great deal of um, anxiety, uh, jittery. They jump, especially when that light comes on. It's almost, you'll, you'll be like, well, that light never used to scare them before, but when the light comes on, they, they jump and freak out completely, um, whatever the offending um, appliance is, a heater. They might get uh, kind of sketch right when the heater comes on and it goes off and it comes back on again. And if there's a stray voltage situation, well, you kind of get the idea. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit at the end about how to measure stray voltage. I'm not an electrician, but it was explained and shown to me. I've done it once. Uh, it's not a common thing, but it's, it's easy to measure. All right, so let's talk about broken backs. Okay, so to recognize a broken back in a fish, uh, they have to be kind of large-ish. Um, to even be able to see it, but the swimming and the air bladder effects are very characteristic. Uh, in the first place, uh, broken backs have a tendency to be sudden onset to where the fish is normal at dinner and then tomorrow morning at breakfast, the fish is swimming with only the front half of its body. That doesn't mean it can't waggle its tail. It can do that, but that's really those muscles below the fracture are only working at all, just because they're attached to the tail that is being wagged from the upper part of the body. I don't know if that makes any sense. If I can find some video of a fish with a broken back and the way it swims, I'll put it in the video here. Uh, or later, I'll just do a supplemental video, broken back video. Anyway, the uh, when the spine breaks, two things happen. The the muscles in the um, in the fish below the fracture don't work anymore, and very often when the spine fractures above the thoracic uh, cavity, you'll notice the air bladder suddenly stops working. The fish will either sink flat to the bottom or um, the fish will um, flip over and float or flip over at the bottom. In other words, their ability to regulate their air bladder goes away because this is how the air bladder works. In fish that have 
an air bladder, there's a rich bed of capillaries, uh, blood supply, that forms a sponge associated with the surface of the, of the air bladder and little microscopic aliquots of, of, of air um, through the bloodstream enter into the air bladder. Well, th that would be great, except that the air bladder will fill completely eventually and uh, become too buoyant, so there has to be a way out for the, um, the air that fills the air bladder. And there is. It's a tube. It's called a physostome. In big fish, like koi, you can actually find the physostome. It goes uh, forward from the air bladder to the back of the throat. Um, it's an actual visible tube, and I think I have a picture of it that I can show you from a necropsy I did years ago. Um, so the um, physostome immediately malfunctions. The physostome's job is when the fish is too buoyant, the physostome is to open and allow a drop of, of air to leave, uh, either be burped out or to go through the digestive tract, but usually burped out a little, and the fish becomes negatively buoyant. And the physostome opening and closing allows the air bladder to do its thing. Well, with the um, fracture in the spine, the air bladder, the physostome no longer works, and the fish, uh, either the physostome just opens and lets the fish to the bottom, or the physostome won't open and it floats the fish to the top. Either way, um, spinal injury, floater or sinker with the second half of its body just waggling uselessly behind the uh, upper body, which is functional with normal pectoral fins and a desire to swim normally. So the two relate in that sometimes with stray voltage, there's a chronic severe twitching of the muscles. The fish are very twitchy. And fish actually, especially larger fish, actually have the ability under really abnormal circumstances, they have the ability to contract their muscles so hard that they can luxate a spine, break their back. So when a pond gets hit, for example, by lightning nearby, and even if it's been grounded out, I mean, you're talking about, you know, astronomical amounts of amps and volts and the whole thing, grounding sometimes is just a, a joke. Um, it's enough to clench the fish suddenly enough to where a spine will break. Spines also break when you carry a large fish in a net. If you see somebody doing that, uh, you've got to doubt it. it. Here's the thing. The fish is engineered to not bear weight. It's not a quadruped. It doesn't walk around. It's supposed to be suspended in water at all times. The only time a fish is actually supposed to be out of water is if it's a lungfish or if it accidentally jumps on the shore for a second, something like that, but not to be carried in a net especially carried in a net with other fish on top of it. That's just more strain than the spine of a fish is meant to carry. Um, fish should be in a koi sock or uh, some sort of a net or bowl. They should never be carried full body weight in a net, uh, which bends them into a C shape and they start flopping and can break their back. I wouldn't uh, do that. That happens a lot when you, when you get fish sometimes and they have to be transported long distances to get to you. You buy a perfectly normal fish and it arrives at your place with a swim bladder problem. A lot of times it's because they carried it in nets and uh, broke its back. Which brings me to another point and that is that anytime you think you have a broken back in a fish, uh, negative buoyancy, positive buoyancy flipped over, swimming with the front half of its body and not the back half, x-rays are a good idea and they're not that hard to do. Uh, finding a veterinarian that will do them for you. Most veterinarians are interested in that, um, at least somewhat, and, and they wouldn't mind anesthetizing the fish with some oil of cloves. I've got a video on that. Anesthetizing the fish with some oil of cloves, wrapping it in a plastic bag, and then shooting some uh, x-rays to see um, how the spine is. At least it would let you know what you're dealing with for sure um, and what the prognosis is. Um, so we were at the subject of um, the uh, stray voltage causing a broken back. Either it hits the fish real hard and they clench, um, or um, the chronic spasticity in the muscles eventually wears the back down. Um, but then let's talk briefly about nutritional deficiencies, because the number one vitamin deficiency in broken backs is vitamin C. And there isn't a lot of vitamin C in um, fish. And what I'm getting at there is a lot of people have carnivorous fish, um, 
or even koi, and they feed craptastically. Um, so the fish are getting, like, just fish to eat. If you have a large carnivorous fish, you should try pinkies, um, frozen pinkies. They're, they're basically just little meatballs uh, made by tiny mice, and they take the mice babies and they freeze those. And you can buy those at, like, a, a pet smart is a place that has them in a little freezer in the pet section, and, and you just thaw one and, and drop it in there, or put it on a, um, a pair of um, tweezers, see if you can get your fish to take it. If you can get a carnivorous fish to eat pinkies, you don't have to worry about nutritional deficiencies because you could alternate between, say, uh, chunks of meat, uh, lean or not, um, f f frozen fish, live fish, um, and then, of course, some uh, pinkies. Um, heck, I, I mean, there's some carnivorous fish out there that should be eating full-size mice, maybe even rats. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, when my goonch catfish gets full-size and he's swimming around at three and a half feet, I'll probably be feeding him rabbits. Um, of course, you know, euthanized. But anyway, so let's. Uh, so as far as nutritional deficiencies, vitamin C is a common cause of a snapped back. Vitamin deficiencies in large fish are not uncommon if you just feed fish to the fish. Um, in nature, they would be getting things like amphibians and crustaceans and other things to vary the diet. Um, in uh, nature, they don't get just a kind of fish all the time. Um, so nutritional deficiencies can weaken the spine or cause a deformity which can be aggravated by uh, stray voltage, um, loose electricity in the tank, um, which can be aggravated by jumping out, um, in which case um, th that vitamin deficiency relative to stray voltage, relative to jumping out, snaps a spine. And uh, like I said, x-rays are good. And then I did a video uh, on jumper which talks about how you're supposed to handle it when a fish jumps out of the tank. This video dovetails with that because uh, a lot of times when you have a jumper, there's stuff you need to do and stuff that would help with a broken back at the same time. So check that video out. I appreciate your patience and um, your, your investment of time on the discussion of um, broken back, scoliosis, vitamin deficiencies, and stray voltage. Have a good day. Just a moment if you don't mind. If using robot people to deliver this video content isn't cool with viewers, please let us know in the comments section, below. Also, please subscribe to this channel to be informed when the video about, what to do when your fish jumps out of the tank, is released. If you click, like, on this video, it ranks higher on YouTube and more people can find it. You have our thanks. I'm just a robot lady. Take care now.